This is the fourth in a series of short podcasts designed for the families of children with chromosome 18 abnormalities. In this podcast, we'll look at the relative size of the chromosome compared to the size of a gene, compared to the size of a base pair of DNA. Here's the same clinical karyotype that we've seen before. As you know by now, these short little chromosomes actually pack a very long molecule of DNA. But just how long is it? As we saw previously, this diagram depicts the structural packaging of DNA into a chromosome. What looks like squatty little things under a microscope are actually very, very long linear chemical structures that have been very precisely packaged. The chemical structure of the DNA is shown in red and blue. In this depiction of a DNA double helix, the pairs of blue chemical subunits are the base pairs. So you can see that this chromosome can be thought of as a long string of base pairs. If you wanted a way to count how long this DNA molecule is, you could count the number of base pairs. You could also define a position along this DNA molecule by a base pair number. To go back to our cookbook analogy, this would be like assigning every word in the cookbook consecutive numbers. Then, if someone told you that word number 10,452 should be teaspoon instead of tablespoon, you would know exactly which word they were talking about. In this same way, assigning consecutive numbers to each base pair allows discussion about very specific locations along the DNA molecule. Then, if we also look at the chromosome in terms of the genes, there are over 300 genes on chromosome 18. Any one gene may be thousands or tens of thousands of base pairs long. In the diagram to the right of the karyotype is the official banding pattern of chromosome 18, shown in shades of gray. The centromere is dark orange. To the right of that, in black, is the base pair scale demarked in million base pair units, beginning with one at the top and showing 10 million base pairs, 20 million base pairs, etc., all the way down to base pair number 76,117,153 at the end. To the right of that, the green and white lines depict the location of the genes. Let's zoom in on one section so you can see it more clearly. Here are the chromosome bands on the left and the base pair scale on the right. The green and white lines indicate the position of the genes. The abbreviations for the gene names are shown for some of the genes to the right of the black line. What is not shown here is that genes have length. The DCC gene is actually very long, one of the longest in the entire human genome. So it really takes up most of the space between the genes above and below it. But what you can appreciate here is that the genes are not evenly distributed. This means that you cannot make a correlation between a certain number of base pairs representing a certain number of genes. The other thing that you should be able to now appreciate is that the identification of a very small deletion or duplication in a karyotype actually represents a change in a large number of genes. Something has to be massively wrong in order to see it under a microscope. So in order to detect smaller but clinically significant changes, newer molecular-based techniques such as fish and microarrays have been developed. Future podcasts will explain these techniques. Here we want to demonstrate the relative size of the genes to base pairs to the various detection methods. In order to appreciate the scale, I thought we could use something we all have an appreciation for when talking about distance, a football field. So if we line up chromosome 18 along a football field, this gives us a reference to talk about length that's easier to visualize. Remember that every chromosome has a different length, and chromosome 18 is one of the small ones. So using this scale, chromosome 1 would be over three football fields long. One yard of this football field size chromosome would be within the yellow box shown near the top of the chromosome. Let's zoom in on that location. Using this scale, one yard would be the length of the chromosome within the yellow box. On average, this one yard length would include three or four genes, but it could be as many as eight or ten, or as few as none. Using this scale, one inch would be 21,111 base pairs of DNA. 
So even if you stretch chromosome 18 out to be the length of a football field, you would still need a microscope to distinguish single base pairs. Using this scale, the yellow box indicates the size of the smallest deletion or duplication that could be found using the conventional cytogenetics that produces the karyotype that you've seen now many times. This box includes 5 million base pairs and would cover 6.5 yards on the football field. This means that a deletion or duplication that would be undetectable in a karyotype could, for example, include 20 genes. So now you are surely asking yourself, are these really normal chromosomes? And the answer is, you can't be sure. So in summary, cytogenetic analysis that generates a karyotype using the light microscope technology discussed here is a useful screening tool because all the chromosomes can be visualized at once. However, it's not very specific because it's low resolution. But it is very useful in detecting whole chromosome changes and large rearrangements between chromosomes. And it also is readily available in all cytogenetic laboratories.